Summer is nearly here. The games are getting hotter than ever. This is the best of board game geek. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We're being silly off camera. Sorry, We're being buddy. silly off we're camera. We're being silly billies. We're uh, if we're laughing. <laughs> We're gonna talk about board games today. We have the brothers. Bar. We're back for another best of board games. Yes. We're talking about some news in board game, the hottest games of the month, um, and then a couple Murph picks of our own. You know what? Let's get right into it. Social Media Artist nominees are out for 2023. This, of course, is a German board gaming award that focuses on games that are around the family level, games that German families can play. And the Social Media Artist nominees are Dwarf Romantic, The Board Game, Next Station London, and Fun Facts. There's also the Kennerspiel Awards that are for slightly more strategic games. This year we have Challengers, Planet Unknown, and Iki. And there's even Kinderspiel games. So if you're looking for some interesting games that might be coming out over here or have already come out here, and you're in other places that might be releasing to you for kids, there's awards there as well. So you can check out an, a post about that on Board Game Geek that goes into each game, a little bit about the process that, that happens for nominations. And as always, Board Game Geek covers all the games. You can see Lincoln and the Game Night crew checking out and covering all the games that are nominated for all the different categories of the spiel, usually every year. And if you were at BGG Spring, you got to even play them. It's really cool. It's an exciting time for board games every year. So those are the Spiel Yards nominees. So last month we were talking about the Golden Geeks nominations were out, but this month we get to talk about how the Golden Geek winners are out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through them all, uh, all the winners. Congratulations to all the winners. It's super, super big deal. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's just very cool. So let's go ahead and go through the winners of the Golden Geeks. For a two player game, we had Splendor Duel, Artwork Presentation, we had Flamecraft, Cooperative Game, we had Return to Dark Tower. Expansion was Dune Rise of Ix, or is it Ix, Mike, can you be Okay, cool. Uh, innovative game, we had Cat in the Box. Light game of the year was also Cat in the Box. Medium game of the year was Heat, Pedal to the Metal. Heavy game of the year was Carnegie. Party game was Ready, Set, Bet. A print and play was Aquamarine. Solo game was Turing Machine. Uh, thematic game was Heat, Pedal to the Metal. War game was Undaunted. Uh, best podcast was actually This Game is Broken, which is our podcast. So that's really cool. We come in the second for like three years in a row. So it's really cool to finally win. So. Yeah, this game is broken. Let's check out the podcast. <laughs> um, and the best board game app was Everdell. So congrats to all the winners. It's a really big deal. Uh, yeah, it's just cool. I like the Board Game Geek Awards because I like because everyone at home gets to vote. And it's y'all the ones who voted all those in. So uh, congrats to all the winners. So there's a lot of award stuff going on this time of year in the news, as you can see. Uh, uh, shouts out to those nominees and winners of the Golden Geeks yeah? and the Spiel Yaris, uh, nominees. But we're here to talk about the hottest games yes. of the month, Nick. There's things that have been talked about. Some of them are related to some of those Spiel Yaris nominees. Uh, so let's get into the hotness right now. All right, so we're gonna be talking about the hottest games of the month. These are games that are all over the hot. Scorching up month. the charts. Indeed, going up, down, up, down, and stuff like that. These are the games that we saw in the hottest that seem interesting, so we're gonna talk about them. Let's get to number 10. Number 10 is Planet Unknown. Just got nominated for the Kenner Spiel. Absolutely, so that might have helped it get bumped up. It's been a popular one uh, basically since it came out. This yeah. is a, a game where you're terraforming a planet. You can have asymmetric planets or the same planets, asymmetric corporations or the same corporations. Yep. And it's all simultaneous play. Yeah, so what you're huge. gonna be doing is putting out these polyomino tiles onto your planet. And every time you do, it's gonna show kind of two types of things that are- that are Two terrain types. Terrain types yeah. that are representing the development of the planet. They're gonna give you these tracks that you bump up. So you can get, like, get like a rover that moves around and collects life pods and asteroids. You can work on your civilization. You can work on your technology, uh, all sorts of stuff. It's super duper fun. You're always engaged with the game because you're always yeah. taking turns and we love it. It's really, really good. We Number 10. And honestly, I kind of hope it wins the Kennerspiel because it's my favorite of the Kennerspiel we nominees. So, um, it's number 10. Um, and yeah, so I think it's coming out of the expansion soon. So, really yeah. excited to see that. Right. Really right. excited to get the yeah. game. Plan number, yeah, plan, I don't know, it's number 10. Number, <laughs> number nine is Chaos in a Box. So, this oh, is yeah. Thunder Road Vendetta. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this game is just hitting people's hands. It was yes. uh, kickstarted last year. Yep. Um, and yeah, this is kind of like a, it's a racing game, but it's kind of like a Mad Max racing game where you're you're racing down this straight road. Yeah. And you have these like crazy, like armored cars and you're like shooting each other. You can like slam into each other and actually like go on top. You actually stack cars on top. Yeah. 
and you're just you have to constantly flip over these cards to just show like what direction you go into because yeah. you might get sm slammed you're rolling into dice and stuff and and there's just chaos things can chain react into each other it's nuts you can run into a cliff and it vaporize your yeah, car you sometimes it'll just go straight into the void and it's would... yeah it's super duper fun because it's a racing game where it's just like you could also just be the only car left on the road yeah. and that will also win yeah. you uh, there are a lot of things in this game like uh, player powers. You get like a leader. There's additional uh, types of players like a big rig. Yeah, some expansion stuff. Yeah, so, like, a, like, a, like a motorcycle gang. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. It's just super fun and silly. Uh, it's one that we really enjoyed and played it back when the campaign was going yeah. on. I can't wait to play the full game. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, it's really awesome. Looks super fun. It's got a great style to it. So that's yeah. Thunder Road Vendetta. All right, let's get number eight. Number eight uh, is hitting people's hands. Well, it's also on BGA and people have been playing a lot there. And this is Earth. Heard of it. Earth is a Tableau engine building game Lay where you're building it. out like your own little island. You're on an island, you're yeah. building out and you're building out with different ecosystems and different like plants, yeah. fauna yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and you're pulling out these cards and it's cool because this game, you're always doing some kind of planet unknown. It's like you're always doing something yep. because whenever someone chooses an action, there's a stronger action and then a follow action that everyone else gets to do. And then on top of that, the actions are color coordinated. And then if you have cards that have the same color on them, you then get to activate those cards as well. So a lot of times you're just putting together these ridiculous chains oh, of different things. You're great. like, oh, the red action, cool. I got like 10 cards I now get to activate. It's really, really fun. I like Earth a lot. It's just super cool. It's a blast. It's just one that you're, you're there's so many ways to score points, so many synergies and things you can build between the cards. Yeah. It's just fun and different every time. Love it personally very much. That's Earth at number eight. All right, let's get number seven. Number seven is The Witcher Old World, oh, which yeah. I believe is based off of Luigi's Mansion. Yes, but it's Old World, so it's like the baby Mario games yes. when they're <laughs> younger. Yeah, exactly. Yes, this is a game based on obviously the Witcher series yes. of games, books, shows, and all, all yeah. the other things, uh, where you are, it's a competitive game, kind of a competitive campaign mm -hmm. game that you're going through that really um, lives in and focuses on making, having to make tough decisions. Which is part of The Witcher, Yeah, right? tough yeah. decisions that are going to vastly kind of like morally out. ambiguous yeah, stuff that know. will change the game in the future. Yeah. And that's a big part of this game, yeah. Yeah, so it seems like they wanted to lean in that, make a game where you have to really think about stuff and, and again, I'll, I'll say mature choices for lack of a better word, not that in crass terms, but no, just like, yeah. It's not just like, like I don't know, maybe this. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll get some stone. <laughs> I mean, you could play that way, but uh, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of bringing the board, uh, the video game down to the table for you to play analog style. Yeah. And it's now hitting people's hands. Indeed. So that's why it's on the list. Uh, hopefully people are enjoying it. Let's go yeah. and get number six. Number six is here pretty much every single month, and it probably will be for a while, and this is Ark Nova. We always talk about it. It's a big zoo game. Indeed, big old zoo game. You're building out a zoo, you're building out enclosures for animals, um, and you're getting like sponsors and stuff like that, which will give you kind of like special powers. And it's a big, you basically have an appeal track. The appeal is gonna be based off of the animals that are in your zoo. Yeah. People wanna come see the cool elephants and stuff. And then you have a conservation track, which is worth more than the appeal track. Basically, like every two or three appeal is worth like one conservation. Yeah and uh, you want to cross those paths. And so you can go like super heavy appeal, super heavy conservation, it's kind of up to you. Yeah. But it's just a really cool game. People absolutely love it. I mean, it's number four on BG overall. It's, it's, it's huge. It's been loved. It's got an expansion coming out, just hit BGA. I mean, it's, Ark Nova's here to stay, you know? It's, absolutely. I, I, we love it. We played it a couple times this last month. Just really, really love Ark Nova. Absolutely, it's great. It's number six on the hotness. It'll probably be around for a little while. And uh, in the meantime, we'll get to number five. Number five is going to be Biohack, which at the time of recording this, it hit Kickstarter today. Yeah, so it's been kind of on the hotness in anticipation yes. for the campaign. This is a game where there's kind of a mad scientist person who was uh, biohacking. Doing, was, a, doing was, a bit of splicing. Yeah, putting wings on moose and crazy things <laughs> like that. Things that you would expect on those animals. Uh, maybe a, a, a hair unnatural. Yeah, you know, and uh, so he just got shut down. Yeah. Like, 20 years later, this corporation came in and said, like, no, let's, let's capitalism let's wins see. out in the let's end. see what happens, you know? Yeah, so now we're back and we're doing more hacking like that. So it's kind of a big Euro game with a really interesting, different kind of theme, which is something that we appreciate in general always, with, like, Euro yeah. games, which we stick pretty, you know, pretty much in the Euro realm. Uh, it's always fun to have interesting, engaging themes. It's got this kind of synth wave, punky... Kind of, uh, yeah, at least the color vibe. scheme. Yeah. yeah, the color scheme anyway. So that's something that we're always personally into as well. Yeah. So uh, this one, again, as of our recording, has just hit its crowdfunding yeah. campaign. So uh, check it Seems out cool. if that's one that you're interested in. Indeed. All right, that's number five. Let's get number four. Number four is Heat Pedal to the Metal. Pedal to the Metal. This month hit the top 100. So it's been flying up the, flying up the charts. Uh, it's really, really fun. Heat is a Formula One racing game. Yeah 
where you're going around a track mm. um, and you are, as Mikey did, you're going into different gears yeah. and the higher gear means you can play more cards, which means you're gonna need to go farther which just makes sense, right? But then as you go around turns, you're gonna have to slow down. You have to shift down essentially to get around those turns because if not, you have to play a bunch of heat cards because your engine is heating up yeah. and you can spin out if you aren't able to play as many as you need to, um, which is pretty detrimental. So you don't want that to happen. So it's just constant like balancing between going as far and as fast as you can and getting around those tight corners. And yeah, of course there's like four up. maps in the base game. Four maps in the base and game. And some are like pin, just modules. pin turns. You're just yeah. like, yeah, a whole bunch of different stuff. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff to explore in this game. You can play against AI opponents. Yeah. So even at lower player counts, the game works great because you can have a big contested race yeah. every time. It's one that we pre-ordered uh, kind of in the new super print excited, run yeah. so we can finally get it. So we're super excited ourselves. But it's done really well for itself. Uh, Days of Wonder is kind of back. There's another thing that Days of Wonder is doing as well. So they got a lot going on right now. It's exciting. Right. Yeah. Uh, so number four is Heat Pedal to the Metal. Indeed, let's get number three. Number three is gonna be a game called Kingmaker. This yes. is a remake of a game called Kingmaker. Bringing it back. Uh, I think it's called the Royal Redo or something like that. Is like the, the <laughs> like tagline it. or whatever. I was like, all right, cool. But this is based off of Kingmaker, um, which I believe is like an area control game. And this version, they kind of do with a lot of what a lot of remakes have been doing, which I think is really cool, where they're like, hey, here's like the original game, but yeah. in here also you can play this way. And there's also there's a way you can play where it makes the game a little bit shorter. Yeah. Um, and there's like more than one, there's variable wind conditions, so you have different stuff you can kind of be going for. Yeah, th different things might trigger the end of the game, but they also have the kind of standard game yes. from before, what you'd expect and probably maybe what you would want. It's still there where you're trying to kind of control a certain area. And then a big thing they've done, which it seems like a very kind of uh, modern trend, is to add a solo mode. Yeah, you can now play it solo, which yeah, I think is really, is cool. really cool, um, because it's just nice to be able to play these kinds of games solo. Yeah. And there's a lot of solo gamers out there, and so kind of catering to that audience at least a little bit. Sure. Give them the option. A good idea, right? Exactly. Might as well. You're going to sell more copies if there's a good solo mode in there. And so uh, Kingmaker is back, and it's uh, number three. Pretty hype about that. So it's number three. Let's get number two. Number two is Aeon's Trespass Odyssey. Colon Odyssey. Indeed. Uh, this is a big uh, cooperative campaign game yeah. uh, that is back on crowdfunding. Yeah, it's yeah. Hit, just hit people's hands, I believe, Correct. and then now it's also back on, it was like a second printing and some new stuff, I think. Yeah, yeah. so uh, a lot of these we were kind of talking before we record, like a lot of these big games, it's like they don't really retail well because they're no, big, they're expensive, big. you know, games that, that maybe would just sit on a shelf, so they kind of rely on this crowdfunding to kind of do effectively like their print runs, yeah. it seems. And then yeah, of course, yeah. stores maybe buy the games and stuff of course, like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's back on crowdfunding because there's obviously a bunch of people that maybe heard about the first time around, didn't get there in time for the campaign itself. And then now uh, that with introducing more content, yeah. sprucing some things up, I imagine as well. Yeah, but it's a big game, kind of all the old gods fell, like in old, old Greece, stuff like yeah. that. And it's just- Dark times and all. Seems cool though. It seems cool. People are really, really into it. Uh, it's a big, crazy campaign game. Really so, can invest a lot of time yeah. into this one. Yeah. So that's number two, Aeon's Trespass Odyssey. Let's get to number one. Number one uh, is parked in the number one spot right now because uh, it's really good and it was nominated for the Spielers Yards. This yes. is Dorf Romantic, the board Dorf game. Dorf Romantic, the board game, which Indeed. is uh, based on the video game Dorf Romantic. Uh, and uh, it, it, in the video game, it's it's a tile laying game. You're placing out hexagonal tiles in the video Having game. Having played both, they're pretty similar. Yeah. yeah, you're building out landscape types like rivers and, and train tracks and, and fields, forests and villages and stuff like that. And in the board game, you're doing the same thing. You're working together with players at the table to kind of build out the best uh, kind of landscape before you, and you're gonna be trying to complete tasks. Yeah. So you might draw out a task tile that has, say like, hey, I need to have four train tracks all yep. connected, uh, you know, four tiles long, and as soon as you complete that, you'll complete that task, yep. which becomes four points for you at the end of the game, and you get more tasks to do. Yep. And you're kind of trying to make sure that you're turning those tasks over, yep. because you have a, another stack of tiles, the landscape tiles, and if that stack ever runs out, your game is over. So you're trying to extend your game as long as you can to make sure you get as high of a score as possible. And then like the video game, depending on how you score, what you do, you're gonna unlock uh, more content for the game, more tiles, uh, more types of uh, variable ways to score points, yeah. all sorts of stuff uh, as you go. So it keeps that kind of discovery element, but keeps it a very casual family weight game. Yeah. This is one that we've played now a couple of times. We got to play a BGG Spring. Yeah. Really fun. Uh, with Aldi and Lincoln and, and the BGG team. And it was so much yeah. fun. Uh, and we were able to, uh, we got gifted a copy as well. Yeah. So now we're exploring the campaign. It's awesome. It's just a really, really good time. Fun. And it feels like a perfect kind of, again, for we don't have any say in the vote or whatever, but it feels like a perfect oh, Spiel the Yaris nominee because it is that kind of perfect family weight. Yeah, game. totally is. So that's number one um, <laughs> on the hotness. We'll see what the end of Spiel the Yaris end up being. 
Uh, maybe it win. Who knows? Yeah. At the end of every hotness video, we always talk about uh, the most played games month. These, yeah. are, these are plays that people logged on BGG saying, hey, I played this game. So make sure to log your plays on BGG because you it. can affect this list. So number 10 uh, is Acropolis, a really fun game. It has 4,691. I think it's the first time it's on this list. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah, Heat Pedal to the Metal is at 5,160. Be getting played. Yep, Seven Wonders Duel has 5,199. Absolutely. Terraforming Mars has 5,327 plays. That's right. Cascadia has 6,114. Very nice. We got Marvel Champions out here at 7,188. We're trying to jump up in numbers. It's crazy that that's like fifth now. Yeah, middle of the pack. Middle of the pack, wow. Uh, Azul <laughs> has 8,061. Always popular. Earth out here on Board Game Arena, of course, as well, 8,346. Uh, Wingspan has 9,370. And way above that, still, Wingspan's been the champion for a while. Arc Nova is now on Board Game Arena out of alpha testing, so people have access to it, and it's gotten played 11,963 times. It's pretty nice. It's, it's crazy that both of the crews are not on the top yes. 10. They're literally 11 and 12, but, but like, like that's, that's nuts. Oh boy. That's nuts, yeah. man. All right. Those are the top 10 most <laughs> played games that are logged on BGG this month. We're gonna pop up and go through some Murph picks. My Murph pick is something that I think we can all relate to, and this is a, a, a forum here on Board Game Geek by Alex underscore under, so Alex under. Um, and this is your most favorite unplayed, or rather your most unplayed favorite game, specifically what it is. And this is a game that you love, 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 but you never, ever, ever get to play. What's that game for you? I wanna see it down in the comments below. There's a lot of those for me. We're big proponents for that. Just because something's my favorite doesn't mean I wanna play it all the time. My favorite game is Viticulture, but I don't always wanna play Viticulture. There's games that will get to the table way, 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 way more often than Viticulture but it's not gonna be my favorite. A lot of people's favorite game is like TI4, but they're not trying to play TI4 every game, every day. So what is your favorite unplayed game or your most unplayed favorite game? I keep saying it the wrong way around. For us, I'm gonna go with War of the Ring. War of the Ring is a game that we absolutely love, but it's just so big, it's so huge, so many rules. We can't play it more than like once a year. And so War of the Ring is our most unplayed favorite game. So my Murph pick is a little bit of uh, board game news that was teased last week and then confirmed this week. It's Ticket to Ride Legacy Legends of the West. So we saw this kind of like pseudo trailer for a Ticket to Ride game coming that also had, in addition to Alan R. Moon, Rob Davio and Matt Leacock, who famously made the Pandemic Legacy games. And it got us all to wondering, and then now it's confirmed that Ticket to Ride's going legacy version, getting the legacy treatment. We're gonna play over 12 different kind of uh, games, I should say. And what I was hoping for, it seems like it's true, where you're starting in the East Coast and you're kind of building out the rail network in the United States and trying to kind of be the most successful in dealing with unfolding storylines and events and stuff as you go. I like this idea personally because Ticket to Ride is a nice accessible kind of casual game. And sometimes with legacy games, it can be hard to keep the momentum moving forward for us at least because there's a lot of stuff to kind of track. So I'm hoping that Ticket to Ride being kind of an easier game might make it really playable and I'm just excited to kind of explore and build out and then ultimately wind up with a custom game that you can play that'll be only for you. Only you will have gone through all the stories. So you'll have a kind of a game at the end of it to play. Super duper excited. I, I just want to find out more. I just think it's a really interesting choice for a legacy game and one that's kind of a interesting bit of history. So yeah, let's find out more. So those are a couple Murph picks. The last one we always do at the end of every video is talk about our favorite, personal favorite game of the month. Why do you make me do this? We played a lot of games this month. We're at BGG Spring, which was super fun. If, you, if we got to see you, that's awesome. Go to those conventions. They're really, really cool. So we got to play a lot of games, a lot of new games. Us. Uh, I'll go ahead and go first, because Mike always struggles, struggles okay. with this. Okay, I'm working on it. My that. favorite game, shout out to Aldi, uh, is uh, Nana, which is a great game from Japan. It's essentially Gamers Go Fish, which is how Aldi of Board Game just which is how, I'm gonna say it again, which is how Aldi from Board Game Geek, a lot of syllables in there, messed it up. How he described it to us, which was that it's gamer go fish. You're kind of like, what does that doesn't sound mean? that good. But this is essentially a game where you have- It's a, a memory game. You have a hand of cards that you order from lowest to highest. And then on your turn, you can basically say, hey Mike, what's your lowest card? And they have to show their lowest card. You're trying to get three of the same card. If you do, that's you winning a challenge. If you win three challenges, you win the game. So there's a lot of like memory going on. And it's a lot it's of, ultimately what it is, is it is a memory game. But it's really, really fun. It yes. works so dang well. Oh yes. my gosh, I absolutely adored it. Tiny little game. Um, I believe it's gonna be more available, but- It's from being a, brought over as Trio. You can actually play it on Board Game Arena as Trio oh, is that right? Uh, okay. right now. So yeah, really definitely check it out. Fun, though. Super fun, simple game. 
on that note, so on that same night, we were hanging out with the <laughs> was, BGG crew. We played these back-to-back, -back, basically. Yeah. I played Dorf Romantic uh, as well. We, I think it was us and Aldi, Lincoln. It was, a, it was, a, it was, it was a us, who? Aldi, Lincoln, Kristoff, and Nikki. It was such a good time. Yeah. So we are playing this. This is a, a uh, as we talked about in the hotness and stuff, a cooperative tile laying game. You're trying to complete those tasks. You can unlock content as you go. We absolutely fell in love. Scott, who is a very generous person, gifted us a copy of Dorf yes, Magic before we excited. left. So now we're going through it with our with my wife, and she really likes it too. She yeah. likes it. It's a perfect it's so casual. Good. It's just so fun. We we gushed about it during the hotness that this because we're personally just I'm enamored with it right now. Yeah. It's I cannot wait to play again. I want to unlock all those boxes. We have to keep playing. It's really, really cool. It's <laughs> so really, really cool. best of the month. Those are our best month. Down in the comments below, let us know what game was the best game you played this month, your favorite game you played yes. this month. Um, yeah, it's been a good one, and that's that's it for us. We're gonna get on out of your hair or out of your I have no hair. Scalp or whatever. Um, Either way, we will catch y'all next month in the best of board game geek. Bye everybody.